today's theme is Lent. We will look at what Lent is, what the Bible says about why we observe the season of Lent, and what we do. We know Lent begins on Ash Wednesday, but have you thought about Shrove Tuesday or Pancake Tuesday? Some people call it Carnival, which is Latin for farewell to meat, so that's interesting. Okay, so Ash Wednesday occurs 46 days before Easter. It finishes on the Holy Thursday evening and has done since around the 4th century. In the past, people looking for forgiveness would dress in sackcloth and sprinkle ashes to show their repentance to those around them. In the Old Testament, in Jonah, chapter 3, verse 5 to 6, it says, The people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. Historically, Lent, for around 300 years, people would fast and pray for a period of three days. Later, it was extended to a week, the week before Easter. And in Rome, for a time, it was three weeks. But by the 4th century, when Christianity became legalised within the Roman Empire, it became, as we now know it, 40 days. But actually, it's a total of 46 calendar days. So why is that? It's six days, Monday to Saturday, for fasting, for praying, for doing works of charity. On Sundays, we are feasting. We are celebrating and we go to Mass and remember that Jesus died and that he was resurrected. The 40 days of Lent represent the time that Jesus spent in the wilderness and tempted by the devil. But the number 40 appears many times in the Bible. For example, in the Old Testament, in Genesis, Noah stayed in the ark for 40 days and nights. And in the book of Joshua, Moses and Aaron and the Israelites wandered the wilderness for 40 years. Can you think of any other examples? The word Lent comes from an old English word, which means to lengthen. It refers to spring the season when the days become lighter and longer. But Lent isn't actually mentioned in the Bible. But what does it say? In Deuteronomy, chapter 15, verse 7 to 8, it says, If one of your people is in need in any community in the land which the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not harden your heart, nor close your hand against that person who is in need. Instead, you should freely open your hand and generously give what is enough to meet that person's need. And in the New Testament, in Luke chapter 10, verse 27, Jesus tells us to love the Lord your God with all your heart all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. You must also love your neighbour the same as you love yourself. So that is the why we observe Lent. But what does the Bible say about what we should do during Lent? We fast in Matthew chapter 6. It says, when you fast, 
do not show a miserable or sad face like the hypocrites do. They show long faces to let people know that they are fasting. I tell you the truth, they have already received their reward. But when you fast, wash your face, comb your hair, and so that other people do not know that you are fasting. Only your Father in heaven will know, and your Father that sees everything that you do in secret will reward you. We repent. In Matthew chapter 4, this Jesus began to preach, and he said, Repent, change your hearts, because the kingdom of heaven is very near. And we self-sacrifice. We give things up. In Matthew chapter 10, it says, Any person that wants to keep their own life will lose it. Any person that gives up their life for me will find true life. Purple is the colour of Lent. It's also known as royal purple because in the past only rich people such as royals could afford it. But what does that purple represent? It represents repentance, but also mourning. In Mark chapter 15, verse 17 to 18, it says, The soldiers mocked Jesus, putting a purple robe and a crown of thorns on his head. prayer for strength and guidance. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord God Almighty, Shaper and Ruler of all creatures, we pray for your great mercy, that you guide us toward you, for we cannot find our way and guide us to your will, to the need of our soul, for we cannot do it ourselves. And make of our mind steadfast and firm in your will, and aware of our soul's need. 